Our second story out front, breaking news with new details in the Boston bombing case. Were there missed clues in a Massachusetts triple murder that actually could have led investigators to one of the suspected Boston bombers before the bombing? On September 11, 2011, Brendan Mess, Eric Weissman, and Raphael Tekken were brutally murdered. Their throats slashed ear to ear. Drugs spread across their bodies. The case went cold until after the Boston Marathon bombing, when it became clear that Tamerlan Sarnaev was a key suspect in both crimes. Could the bombings have been stopped? Deb Farrick has this exclusive Outfront investigation. Very. John Allen still remembers oh, Tamerlan Sarnaev's yeah, reaction yeah, when he learned their mutual friend, not, Brendan not, Mess, oh, had been God, viciously not, murdered. But he kind of laughed it off, saying, you know, that Brendan probably got what he deserved, making bad choices, that those were the repercussions he had to face. Sarnaev was never interviewed by state troopers in connection with his friend's murder or the murder of the other two victims, Eric Weissman and Raphael Tekken. But Allen and others we spoke with questioned whether the drugs strewn over the dead bodies were an effective smokescreen, distracting investigators from interviewing people who could have put Tamerlan Sarnaev squarely on the radar. Did Tamerlan ever tell you that police had come to speak to him about what he knew about no. Brand, about the drugs, about anything? No. You know, I, I mean, around here they call we call it NHI, which is no humans involved. Okay, which yeah. means... There were three drug dealers that were murdered over drugs and money. That at least was the perception, even though only one of the three victims had drug-related charges. But four months after those murders, Sarnayev left Boston and traveled to Dagestan, where it's believed he became radicalized. Law enforcement sources question whether the outcome could have been different if investigators had reached Sarnayev in the first place. He always liked to bring a lot of people here. Jamal Abu Rubia saw victim Brendan Mess a few times a week. He owns the Brookline Lunch Diner in Cambridge, where Mess often ate with Weissman and Tekken. He says police never questioned him, and so he never told them about a meeting weeks before the murders, which made Mess and Weissman very, very nervous. He sounded different. He acted different, the guy with them, and they all were, like, nervous. And that time he was, he was really serious, and he wasn't himself. Neither, he says, was Eric Weissman, co-owner of Hitman Glass, a high-end bong company. Journalist Bobby Black, who knew Weissman, believes too many solid leads weren't followed. Anyone who knew Eric would know that he was in no way some kind of dangerous drug dealer. He was a college-age kid who, you know, loved weed. They didn't take the money and they didn't take the drugs. And I think that the police writing it off as that early on, possibly, may be the reason they didn't investigate further, which could have possibly prevented the Boston bombings. Now, the murders took place in the house behind me on the second floor. This is still very much an active investigation, Aaron. And a source that we spoke to who is intimately familiar with these killings defended how this all was handled, saying that both state and local police handled it professionally and according to protocol. Aaron? All right, Deb Farrick, thank you very much. Well, passengers of Ashiana Flight 214 are now taking the first steps in a major lawsuit against, drumroll, 